Hello everyone. In this video, we will try to make sense of various sampling methods. It would normally be impractical to study a whole population. So researchers draw samples to get insights about population. But the samples need to be representative to get quality results. Thus, we have various sampling methods to select an appropriate sample. I am Dr. Farhad Zulfikar and we will discuss the simple random, systematic, cluster and stratified sampling. The selection of the sampling method depends on the nature of the population and the resource availability in terms of time and money. There should be no favorites. An unbiased sample will give equal chance to every individual to be included in the sample. The sample must also be representative. For example, if there are 52 females and 48 males in the population, then the sample should also contain similar percentage of each sex in it. Let's first discuss simple random sampling. It is the most common sampling method and gives everyone an equal probability of selection. It is also theoretically the ideal method of sampling. It is akin to drawing a lottery from a hat where every lottery number is equally likely to be selected. Let's say we have listed people with their names on a list of 1 to 100 where each person will have equal chance of being picked. It can be anyone on the list between 1 and 200. Simple random sampling is of two types with replacement and without replacement. If we put back the number in the hat after picking a number, then it will be with replacement method. Obviously, this may give us the same name repeatedly. If we don't put the selected number back before our next pick, then this will be without replacement method. In simple random sampling, we list each member of the population and use random numbers to decide which objects are in the sample. Each object is equally likely to be selected. This process produces unbiased sample which we hope is also representative. However, it can be difficult and expensive if our sample is distributed in a large geographical area. Simple random sampling is preferable when dealing with population in concentrated geographical location and when a good sampling frame exists. A sampling frame is a list of all the people in the population of interest. Systematic sampling Individuals are selected at regular intervals from the sampling frame. The starting point is chosen randomly and then the intervals are chosen to systematically take samples to ensure an adequate sample size. Considering our previous example, we have 200 population size and we want to choose 10 people as sample. We will first choose a starting number at random and then take every 20th person to get a sample of 10. First we choose randomly one green, then can be blue, orange, green, blue, orange and so on. Systematic sampling is usually a good approximation of random sampling. However, if there is a pattern in the population, then it, it can give a biased sample choosing a certain type of person more often. For example, if there is a trend like here, we may get same type of person each time we do systematic sampling. Then cluster sampling which is usually applied to geographical groups. In cluster sampling, the population is divided into some clusters or groups. It is advantageous if the recording units are available in some suitable clusters. For example, blocks or towns within a city can be clusters. Cluster sampling is applied when the clusters are homogeneous across groups. However, there is heterogeneity within each cluster, meaning all type of people are found in each cluster. 
cluster sampling can give a biased sample if these two conditions are not met. Out of several clusters, a few are selected using simple random sampling. From the selected clusters, individual recording units are again selected using sim simple random sampling. Cluster sampling is more convenient and practical than simple random sampling, which is more theoretically ideal. Stratified sampling usually applied for specific characteristics. In this sampling technique, the population is divided into several non-overlapping subpopulations based on certain criteria. Each subpopulation is known as stratum. From each of these strata, subsamples are chosen by simple random sampling. The master sample size is the sum of all subsamples drawn from all strata. For example, the characteristics defining strata can be income, age or occupation. If I want to study income, I may choose to survey people based on income of less than 30k, 30 to 50k and more than 50k per month. Here, stratified sampling will be most appropriate as it will ensure people from each income group, sometimes proportional, are included in sample. Stratified sampling differs from cluster sampling. In cluster sampling, a few clusters are chosen from several clusters and subsamples are drawn from these chosen clusters only. In stratified sampling, subsamples are drawn from all the strata. Thank you very much for your time don't forget to like share and subscribe and also press the bell icon for more videos like this